You're watching The Legal Breakdown. So Glenn, we've got a pretty stunning development here. Donald Trump is now suing the judge in his Manhattan criminal trial as part of a last ditch effort to avoid that trial, which of course is set to begin next week on April 15th. First of all, what is the likelihood that this stunt will actually work? Brian, ordinarily I would say 0.0%. I think you could probably survey 100 criminal prosecutors and criminal defense attorneys and ask them, have you ever had a case where virtually on the eve of trial, the defendant sued the judge to try to put a stop to the case, you know, beginning? And the answer is almost certainly no, a hundred times no. My lingering concern though um, is, remember we had a New York appeals court act not too long ago when Donald Trump uh, had a money judgment entered against him for $464 uh, million dollars and the appeals court swooped in after Donald Trump said, I can't put up a bond for that amount and I won't put up a bond for that amount. And for some reason that went entirely unexplained, the New York appeals court cut it to $175 million and Donald Trump has apparently put up a bond, but stay tuned because the bond is being challenged. Ordinarily, I would say 0.0% chance, but because of that that history that the New York Appeals Court now has of doing Donald Trump an enormous favor with no explanation and no analysis, I will be concerned until we see those jurors file into that New York courtroom beginning on April 15th for jury selection. And I am not going to count my trial chickens before Donald Trump is actually seated at council table. Well, in theory, they would have to take up this issue pretty quickly one way or the other to resolve it before before the jury is set to be seated just next week. So we can expect to see a resolution one way or the other in the next week or so, correct? We can. So the process in New York is basically this will be uh, handled as an emergency motion and just one New York State appellate court judge will rule on it now. And, and we've seen this happen before. And that one judge will very likely deny it. And then Donald Trump can try to raise it with the five judge panel and have all of them decide, you know, whether they should delay Donald Trump's trial or not. I am pretty darn confident that the judges will reject this out of hand because I really do see it as more than just a, a manipulation of, of the court system. I see it as a, an abuse. You know, criminal defendants don't get to sue the judge on the eve of trial to put a stop to their trial commencing. So I'm relatively confident that we're going to get an answer. We're going to get an answer soon. And that answer will be, no, Donald, you're going to trial beginning on April 15th. Well, in a, in a further display of his desperation, he filed a separate filing with an appeals court asking the court to move the trial outside of Manhattan. What are the chances that that last ditch effort is actually going to be successful? That one I'm going with 0.0, .0 because first of all, you know, ordinarily, if there is pre-trial publicity that saturates a particular community when the crime is of local notoriety, then maybe you have a motion to change the venue, to move the, the trial to another location where, um, you know, the, the, the case hasn't gotten the kind of media attention that it got in the jurisdiction where it is to be tried. But here's the thing, Donald Trump can complain about the jury pool in Manhattan being, you know, a heavily uh, voting Democrat rather than Republican. That is absolutely not a basis to successfully challenge the venue and have the case move to another jurisdiction. That motion, I think, is dead in the water. Of course, Donald Trump is also trying to appeal the gag order that was recently expanded by Judge Mershon to say, you know what? You also can't talk about, post about, thereby endanger family members of prosecutors, court staff, the judge's family. Donald Trump can appeal that until the cows come home. And in the event the appellate court wants to take that up, fine. There's no reason to, but fine, because that does not stop the trial from progressing. Now, last week, uh, you and I had spoken about Trump making the issue of presidential immunity, um, putting that forward to try and stop this case from going to trial. Is the fact that Trump is now suing Judge Mershon kind of a tacit admission that that attempt is dead in the water? That's a great question. I'm, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen Donald Trump appeal Judge Mershon's denial of the presidential immunity motion. In essence, Donald Trump said, 
let's just put my trial on hold until the Supreme Court gets around to ruling whether a president is absolutely immune against prosecution. Judge Mershon pretty easily denied that in part because it was filed about 10 months late and it was filed for tactical advantage. There was no excuse for Donald Trump to have waited 17 days before his trial was to start and Judge Mershon told him so. And we haven't seen an appeal of that ruling. I don't think an appeal would be successful in shutting down Donald Trump's trial. But, you know, since when has the prospect of success been a prerequisite for Donald Trump and his lawyers filing anything? All right. Well, top line here for the viewers, what percent certainty do you have that one week from now jury selection will begin in Manhattan? Uh, my go-to, Brian, is that I am not a gambling man. I'm not a high roller. One dollar, dollar is my betting limit. I'm going to put 95 cents of my one dollar. I'm going to hedge my bet by five cents um, that we will see jury selection commence on April 15th because there really is no issue of substance that I think the appeals court will grab onto and say, you know what, Donald Trump has been trying to delay his trial ever since he was indicted. We see through all of these tactics for what they are, gamesmanship, trying to put off his ultimate day of reckoning in the New York state courts, and we're not going to play on Donald Trump's playing field. So I think we're going to see jury selection start on April 15th. Glenn, when the court sees that Donald Trump is putting forward motion after motion with the obvious intent to be to delay this trial, does that actually hurt these subsequent um, motions that he's putting forward because it, it becomes apparent that they're not really being done in good faith, that they're just part of this throw spaghetti against the wall to see what sticks barrage of kind of dilatory tactics that Trump is putting forward? Common sense would say yes, but in my experience, Brian, most judges will take each motion as it comes and they will assess it on its merits, even if it is what we call a vexatious litigant. There's a big word. Somebody who inundates the court with frivolous motion after frivolous motion after frivolous motion. Actually, when it gets so bad, judges can bar vexatious litigants from filing any more motions. But that is rare. You know, I think judges, even though they know what Donald Trump is up to and they're not inclined to play his games, they will assess every motion on its four corners without looking at the history of frivolous motions that Trump and his lawyers have filed. They will resolve it, and then they'll move on to the next motion that Trump files. So the next question then becomes, could Trump be a convicted felon in time for the November election? Like, Could you speak on the timeline here uh, as far as this trial is concerned from beginning to end? Yeah, the, the parties are, are projecting, the prosecutor is suggesting jury selection could take a week or two. I think um, what we call the, the government's case in chief, is, which is when the prosecutors present all of their evidence, will probably take two to three weeks. Then it shifts to the defense. The defense can put on a case if they choose to, or they can put on no case at all, because the burden always rests with the government, with the prosecution, to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. And that burden never shifts to the defense, and the defense doesn't have to present any evidence at all. Um, but it looks like this case could probably go to the jury for purposes of them beginning their deliberations by, you know, sometime in May, um, maybe late May. We could see Donald Trump being a convicted felon. Now, technically, let me just tell everybody that you're not actually a convicted felon until after you've been sentenced. But for all practical purposes, if a jury votes guilty, they find you guilty of felony charges you are, in substance, a convicted felon. You've been convicted by a jury of your peers. I think we could see Donald being a convicted felon by on or around June 1st. All right, well, here's a question that we get a lot. Would a conviction then do anything to prevent Trump from running for office or from taking office? It's not a legal impediment to somebody running for office, including the presidency, or holding office. He could be governing from, you know, inside a jail cell. But practically speaking, politically speaking, you know, I, I don't really pay attention to the polls. Um, and goodness knows I'm not a political analyst. But I have even seen, you know, Trump supporters say, well, if he is a convicted felon come November, even I probably wouldn't vote for him. So I think the political implications are far more drastic than the legal implications. 
Okay, and finally, let's talk about the spectrum of of what the sentencing could look like in this trial. Like, uh, if he's found guilty of all the charges that he's being accused of right now, what could we be looking at? He's charged with 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. Under the laws of New York, it's a Class E felony. And if you're convicted, you can be sentenced to up to four years for each felony violation. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to do, you know, dozens and dozens of years in prison, nor could he given his age. But it is also what we call a probation eligible offense. What does that mean? It means the judge is not required by law to give him any jail time at all. Sometimes the laws as passed by the legislature say, okay, if you're convicted of this offense, you have a mandatory six months in jail, a mandatory one year in prison. Falsifying business records has no mandatory minimum, so it's probation eligible, but up to four years, I believe, per count on which he is convicted. So I happen to believe if, if he's convicted of these nearly three dozen felony charges, which, you know, they're falsifying business records, but it's not as if this was just a simple tax dodge, also a right. crime, but lots of people violate the tax laws of both the state, the states and the federal government. This is something far more sinister and far more damaging to the American system, to our free and fair elections, to the value of our vote, because he was motivated to make these hush money payments and then falsify business records to cover them up because he wanted to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. He wanted to gain unfair advantage. So this is a pretty darn nefarious, I would even say, dramatic case involving falsifying business records to gain unfair advantage in a presidential election. And and Glenn, with uh, a defendant like Donald Trump, and by that I mean someone who's well-connected, wealthy, and powerful, what kind of sentence does the judge usually hand down for a, a felony conviction like this? I wish I could say, um, you know, this is roughly what we would expect, or this is what we have seen in comparable cases. Brian, there are no comparable cases here. This is yeah. a first former president of the United States who committed buku crimes for any number of reasons. He's got 88 felony charges pending against him in four separate jurisdictions, state and federal. If I had to uh, guess, which is the best we can do, what Judge Mershon would do if Donald Trump was convicted across the spectrum of, of all of these charges, you know, he would probably be looking at several years in prison. Would it be two, three, four? Would it be six, eight, ten? Really hard to say. But I do think what judges appreciate is if you don't actually punish crime, if, for example, you sentence him to a home detention, which is like sentencing a convicted felon to, you know, binge watch Netflix and order DoorDash, that's no kind of punishment. If we are to deter tomorrow's aspiring dictator in essence, but somebody who aspires to violate New York state law, particularly to gain advantage in a presidential election, that person has to be punished. It has to involve jail time or nobody will be deterred in the future. Yeah, that's perfectly put. Also, I would just mention that DoorDash and Netflix is my idea of a good Friday night, and I didn't, I didn't even get to commit a felony uh, for it. So, so with that said, we are now in this final week, this final home stretch, uh, to make sure that Donald Trump does stand trial in Manhattan. Uh, so we will continue to follow any updates as we get them. For those watching right now, if you want to follow along, please make sure to subscribe. The links to both of our channels are right here on this screen. I'm Brian Teller Cohen. And I'm Glenn Kirshner. You're watching The Legal Breakdown.